We have actually the management of Sai Silks uh, joining us now. Uh, so their IPO is opening today for subscription. Uh, out of the 1,200 odd crores, which uh, the company, uh, I mean, the uh, issue is raising, 600 crores is fresh, while another 601 crores is via uh, an offer for sale. Just a bit of introduction. <coughs> Sai Silks is amongst the top 10 retailers of ethnic apparel, particularly saris in South India in terms of revenues uh, and uh, profits in FI 2021 and 22. Uh, they, you know, they've got four store formats. There is uh, Kalamandir, uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, Varamahalakam uh, uh, Silks, um, and uh, there is KLM Fashion Mall as well. It offers its products to various segments of the market that include premium ethnic uh, fashion uh, for middle income, value fashion, uh, with a variety of products across different price points. Uh, so, I mean, you know, they've got a wide catchment area in that particular sense. By the way, uh, they did uh, try to do an IPO back in, I think, 2013, uh, but uh, that had to be uh, pulled out because of lack of subscription. But they're back. The market's looking hot. And hopefully this time they will get this uh, done. We have the management joining us right here in our studios, the company's founder and managing director, uh, Prasad uh, Chalavadi. And uh, Bharadwaj uh, Rajamadugu is uh, senior vice president of the company. Both are with us here in our studios. Gentlemen, great to have uh, both of you here. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Uh, so, <clears throat> Talk to us a little bit about the business itself before we go right. any further, because you're predominantly are a sari uh, right. in the sari Something. segment, right. right? Right. So to start with, like you know, I'll just give you a one minute brief. Yeah. Uh, like you know, uh, I started this company in the year uh, 2005, 17 years back. I'm a first generation entrepreneur. Mm. Uh, before coming into this business, I was working as a software engineer living in America. Okay. When I wanted to come back and start some business, I have done an extensive research on which vertical to bet my life into. Mm. So that's where I, you know, figured out uh, this woman-centric Indian ethnic is the go for the future, mm. uh, which is closely associated with our, uh, you know, vocations, weddings and uh, festivals. Mm. So with that thought, we started off our first brand, uh, to, uh, Kala Mandir, in the year 2005. The brand focus was uh, uh, targeting the middle class. And from there, like, you know, in the last 17 years, we have started uh, brand Kanchipuram Varamahalakshmi Silks and uh, brand Mandir, KLM Fashion Mall. And uh, these brands also target to specific sections mm -hmm. and needs of the society. And, uh, like, you know, today to say in the last 17 years, uh, we have grown uh, leaps and bounds. And today we are, uh, you know, in the top 10 retailers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main reason for that was, like, you know, we believe doing it, this business in a so organized way in this unorganized industry. Mm -hmm. And since uh, I'm a, I have a great software background, we have created required systems and checks and balances and uh, tools and modules from the beginning with a great, uh, great advent, uh, administrative advantage we have from our uh, previous histories. Like, you know, that's where uh, we could able you to know, achieve. You chose the segment, as you right. said, right? And you said, well, this is where the maximum opportunity is. <coughs> right. but, uh, but, and you're predominantly, 60 to 70 percent of your revenues are saris. Right. right? Yeah, uh, it's to start, also yeah. in, uh, and you largely south, I mean, Tamil Nadu. Uh, no, like, you know, sir, to start with, like, you know, when I wanted to start business, mm. I identified south as the market to start with because that's where the highest per capita and highest Which spending. states? Uh, uh, to start with, we started off in uh, combined Andhra, mm. today is Telangana. Mm. Mm. So predominantly, we are in Andhra, Telangana, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. We are, four, we are in four states between, like, you know, as of now, we have 54 stores mm. and 6 lakh square feet of retail as of now. Okay. Since you started the business 15, 17 years ago, things have changed a lot, right? right. I mean, 70% uh, of your business comes from saris. Right. <coughs> but now that's become a little bit of a cluttered space. So at some point in time, do you want to diversify into other segments in women's ethnic wear or generally in women's wear as well? Uh, yeah. Let me take the question. So, so currently when we see these trends, like, you know, the industry has been having, seeing a great amount of growth. Uh, the report suggests that, you know, it's an 8% CAGR. But if we do get into details about, like, you know, when we started from 2005 is the brand one, and then we started focusing on different target segments. The core product that people like for when it comes down to occasions or festivities, because that's, that's what people spend during their occasions. Uh, so it always is saris here. And, and, and though we are seeing this new age April in terms of daily wear, the occasion and wedding wear has always been dominated by saris because that's the most preferred choice for women in these four states. Mm -hmm. And even if we talk about this, I mean, 67% is coming from saris and one third is coming from the non sari categories. Uh, what we tend to do is like whenever we try to put up a store, there's a thorough exercise of like, you know, trying to figure out what the target market is, trying to put up a, a product mix as per as what the market needs. And that's the reason why you see this 
mix of the other categories. So as we speak, though we are selling predominantly sarees, because that's what our South Indian customers and South Indian women customers want. By the way, you know, since you're mentioning that, uh, Kanjiram sarees was trending yesterday because uh, Anushka <laughs> Sharma was wearing it at her uh, Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations. So I just wanted to and mention Jani that. Kapoor too. Oh, and Jani Kapoor as well. You're keeping up with all the trends, okay? <laughs> See, if you also have to talk about it, G20. Now, now that's the hottest yeah. news. If you talk about and that. And it's true, right? And, and everybody, everybody yeah. in, in most of the delegates from all over the country is representing themselves in sarees. India is going towards the ethnic spirit and we as Indians are very proud to represent our culture which is corely revolving around saris. But you know, you have a, uh, uh, I guess, a big presence in the south as Prashant was also mentioning. Do you plan to diversify up north as well? Uh, yes ma'am, if you look at our store presence, so though we have 54 stores in four states, our city presence is very less, like around 10 to 12 cities. Uh, the strategy from the company has always been to expand in a cluster model and the cluster model has enabled us to like, you know, get into economies of scale, manage our administrative bandwidth, be it advertisements and warehousing support as well. So since that was a strategy, uh, we are slowly trying to expand into the southern markets right now because we see a great amount of potential. Talking about the potential, I think uh, we've opened two strategic stores uh, almost like about 11 and a half, 12 years ago. One in Kanchipuram and one in Mailapur. Okay. These stores are doing phenomenally well, much above the company's averages. And as, as, as we speak, I think we have opened one store in Q3 in Tamil Nadu with a Kanchipuram Varama Lakshmi Silks format and another store in December. Uh, these two stores also are Kanchipuram Varama Lakshmi Silks formats and all both the stores are in Chennai. Even these stores are doing phenomenally well. With great amount of support that we're getting from the Tamil Nadu audience, we believe that, you know, with these IPO proceeds, mm. we plan to open about 25 stores of Varmaha Lakshmi Silks in the next two fiscals and five of Kalamandir stores. All of them will be in Tamil Nadu as a market and will be opened in a cluster format. As we speak, I think Tamil Nadu has a market potential combined to Andhra and Telangana. And these stores are a testament why we believe that, you know, our strategy is in the right place. Okay, all right. Hi, gentlemen. Good morning. Thanks for coming morning. down to the studio. And you guys are on top of your game with regard to the Saris market. So, good to you. And good to hear, sir, the journey. And I guess you're on your way to your destination as well. You know, right. software man moving into Sari <laughs> is great. Good journey. But let's talk about a couple of numbers then. Yeah. You're looking at adding closer around 30 stores. Correct. What's the break-even time frame that you'll have, uh, you know, traditionally and that could be used as a barometer going ahead as well. So if we talk about our average store size has always been 5,000 uh, square feet mm -hmm. and if we talk about one format, Varma Lakshmi Silks, we expect around 5,000 rupees as a capex cost and uh, the inventory requirement for a Varma Lakshmi Silk store will be around 20,000. Uh, so it's a 12 and a half to 13 crore investment per store and uh, uh, we, we, we see a great amount of uh, uh, payback in terms of the capex is close to around four and a half, five months and in terms of with the inventory included it's around close to 16 to 17 months of payback. Uh, but, the, but the format has always been the newer expansion of the stores because Tamil Nadu is a co-market where we wanted to operate and yeah. the Tamil Nadu market needs silk as a sari. Uh, because we operate in a cluster format, the best part about what we're trying to do here is the core product sourcing happens in and around Tamil Nadu and China region. So with our Varma Lakshmi Silk, it, it's a perfect synchronization and it resonates very well in these markets. Right. And uh, that's why we plan to op open about 25 of Varma Lakshmi Silk stores. Mm -hmm. And even in the offer proceeds, I think uh, close to 400 crores is going towards uh, our growth capital or what we would like to call it towards our expansion of new stores. Okay. Uh, we also plan to repay a long-term debt of about 50 crores. Okay. And uh, the remaining is earmarked towards GCP. Indirectly, what we tend to do in GCP is to uh, reduce our payable days mm -hmm. and uh, therefore give us much leverage in terms of improving our gross margins. So a couple of questions then, since you're raising money and you've given us a broad outline how you want to use it, you'll be reaping some debt. So post this, you'll be debt free or uh, what does what, what the debt come down to? Point number one. Point number two, you're saying you're looking at improving your payable days, right? So what is it and where do you see that number headed? So if you talk about our current debt levels, we are close to around 340 crores. Okay. I think 100 on long term and 240 on short term. Mm -hmm. uh, post this, we only plan to repay around 50 crores of debt, which is mm -hmm. long term. Uh, but if you talk about our future stores, I think majority of the other debt is also coming for working capital requirements. Right. Uh, the entire expansion for these 25 to 30 stores, the working capital is actually allocated within the IPO proceeds of primary itself. Uh, so that's where we headed. So the idea is to slowly bring down the debt levels as we speak. Uh, there's no definitive number at this point of time post issue, but it's a gradual phase that we will be following moving forward. Briefly, if you guys can answer, <coughs> it's, a, it's a cluttered space, right? I mean, there are uh, actually in down south Kerala more than Tamil Nadu, but even Tamil Nadu, saris and gold, right? I mean, uh, holding, uh, okay, that is the listing, by the way, of RR Kabul. Sorry, uh, just, uh, gentlemen, just coming to you. Uh, so that's a solid listing, 13, 14% higher. 
uh, and the uh, stocks listing at about 1177. Uh, we'll ha we'll hear from the management uh, a little later of RR Kabil as well. But back to uh, Sai Silk. So just a, a point. I mean, how do you stand out? Because there are so many brands. Yeah. Uh, you know, there has to be a USP. I mean, you're competing Absolutely. against so many others. You've got to constantly spend to be out there on hoardings, billboards, you know, commercials. Yeah. So I think I think a couple of points here. Our right to win has always been the cluster format number one. With the four store formats, with the four formats, we successfully cater to the entire spectrum of the target group here. Uh, that's the first one. And the second one is definitely the industry. We see great mm -hmm. amount of insights coming from the industry because of the sari is consumption is growing slow by. Mm -hmm. And the most important factor that I would like to attribute this entire success to is definitely the technological backbone. Today we, we, we have developed many tools, many technologies to help us take decisions. It is safe to say that at, at, at Saisal's Kalamandar, we only take decisions which is backed by data. Mm -hmm. There's a dedicated team which analyzes every single data point, each and every product that we sell, we capture around 25 to 30 different data points and that act as a primary mechanism for us to like, you know, get into the details of it. And to the competition speak, I think competition comes in all shapes and sizes. We've yeah. seen um, a local competition, like which is the unorganized players and organized players as well, talking about the industry conglomerates. Yeah. These are our, uh, the sure. reasons why we always stand out. And we also have a very, very strong sourcing network in and around the country. Mm -hmm. Wherever the sari is weaved, we tend to try and be there and source everything under one That's roof. That's amazing. And okay, you know, I just have one final question because we're running out of sure. time. I think three years, three, four years, your compounded growth was in low single digit because of the COVID, etc. I mean, people didn't have anywhere to go, right? <laughs> Why would mm -hmm. they buy saris? But in FY23, you did 20%. Is that sustainable, 20% or are you looking at maybe 10, 15% growth over, over the next three to four years? Sir, uh, even if you look at our pre-COVID history also, we were growing at a CAGR of around 10 to 15 percent, mm -hmm. north of 15 percent. So we, since the you know normalization happened post-COVID, I think since we are getting into, we are uh, seriously focus upon, focusing upon our uh, expansion, we see that north like, you know, north of 15 percent yes. is something that was our, our history because I cannot talk uh, about so the future. So you can hold on to that, 15, 20 yes. percent? If you talk about our expansion in the next, with the IPO proceeds, we plan to open to close to around one and a half lakh square feet of uh, uh, retail space. Okay. But in the history also, we do have a track record of opening uh, a, a similar number of stores and similar number of square feet. Mm -hmm. And we believe these tailwinds coming from Tamil Nadu, the phenomenal customer experience, that I mean, customer response that we have been getting is definitely uh, helping us to get where we want to be. Okay, all right, gentlemen. Thanks so much for coming down. Wishing Thank you all the best. You, you seem you. to have Thank told us so quite a lot about the product. When you list, we'll be interested to know about the revenue projection, yeah. margin pro yeah. projections as well. Yeah. But all the best with Thank the card. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us. Thank, Thank you so you. much. All right. Thank so well.